find a quarterback yet. I think he's better served going to an offensive coach, but Denver has one. They don't want him. The Giants have one. They don't want him. So I think Atlanta is the best place for him beyond those two. And here's why. Raheem Morris actually spent four years in Atlanta previously as a pass game coordinator. Raheem Morris, very good friends with Sean McVay, is one of the rare defensive coaches that really understands offense. It's also a weaker division. NFC South to the NFC North. I think the Lions and the Packers are stacked with excellent offensive talent for years to come, not even paying most of it yet. It's a dome over Chicago weather. And Atlanta, we said this multiple times during the season, probably has the most underrated offensive line in football. PFF has it four. It's not as good as the Lions. You can argue it's as good as anybody else in the league. So in my opinion, now you will get a better version of Justin Fields. He's also going home, more comfortable, probably helps. The Falcons have the number eight pick. They could take a quarterback, but you're going to get the third or fourth best quarterback at number eight. You're, you're not in there. Do you want to give up all this draft capital? I think Atlanta's always been the leader in the clubhouse. I don't buy Pittsburgh for Justin Fields. They don't know how to refine young offensive talent. They've been trying for years to do it with their offensive line. They can't figure it out. And he's not a refined player. So send him down to a defensive coach that understands offense, a bunch of young weapons in a dome at home, weak division. That's about as well as you're going to do without getting an offensive coach. And by the way, it's easy to dump on Justin Fields and I've been critical of him, but Justin Fields is just what happens to every young bears quarterback, Kyle Orton, Rex Grossman, Mitch Trubisky, Justin Fields, Cade McNown. You see glimpses, you have a good stretch, and eventually it doesn't work because it's the Bears. They have a poor owner, always an iffy front office. They have a lame duck coach. But you know what? Atlanta's a better spot. It's a do-over. It's better weather. It's a weaker division, and it's a defensive coach. He's got one in Chicago, but this defensive coach has a better feel for offense. So we will find out. You can blame Justin Fields or you can blame the Bears. We'll know by Thanksgiving. If he's a Falcon, we will know by Thanksgiving. Was it Justin who ends up being average in Atlanta maybe? Or is it the Bears if he flourishes in Atlanta? But it does feel like to me, also should be noted, if he goes to Atlanta, the offensive coordinator is one of McVay's guys, Zach Robinson. And McVay's offensive guys are all good. There are no whiffs with McVay's offensive guys. You may not love Brandon Staley, but Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota, outstanding. Guy in Cincinnati got to a Super Bowl, pretty good. Zach Robinson, super bright guy. So McVay's offensive guys all hit. Sean's one of the smartest guys in the league. He doesn't miss on any of his offensive guys. Like none. And that's who Atlanta, Raheem Morris, brings him over. That's who Atlanta's got as the OC. So if Justin Fields has talent, you'll see it. And if he doesn't work, it's on him because Atlanta is about as good as you're going to do having a defensive coach, weak division, nice weapons, defensive coach spent four years, passing game coordinator, a McVay disciple, offensive coordinator, tremendous offensive line. That is about as good as you're going to do. If you're Justin Fields out of Chicago. So NBC reporting, it's likely Atlanta Raheem Morris saying we I wouldn't have this job if quarterback play was better. Now, maybe they could also get Justin Fields and draft a quarterback. I wouldn't do that. I think that's that's too much for Fields. He needs to be refined. He needs to be supported. He's gotten beat up a little bit in the press. So very exciting times, J-Mac. And Caleb Williams is now talking. Very exciting times. Yeah, I, you know, I hear all this Justin Fields, Atlanta, and I'm looking around and I'm like, you remember your boy Sam Darnold? Yeah. Yeah. Top five pick, a lot of prospects. Yeah. He ends up going to San Francisco after starting in multiple places and sitting. And now you and a lot of people think he's one of the best backups in the league. Yeah. Does it make sense for Fields to go to a smart offensive coach on a good team behind a good quarterback and maybe be a backup as well, opposed remember, to go to Atlanta where I, 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 I remember. I don't know that he's going to be a slam dunk in Atlanta. Sam Darnold didn't go from the Jets to San Francisco. There were a couple pit stops, yes. <laughs> where he wanted to be a number one. And struggled. And struggled. So Justin Fields, if we're going to do the Darnold comp, Darnold went to Carolina to be the guy and wasn't the guy. Yeah. So Justin Fields is saying, hey, I've shown flashes. I get one more shot. Now, if he doesn't work as a starter, and they'll probably give him two full years, 
And I think I think it'll be a better version of him. Mm-hmm. I think Raheem Morris has a better feel for offense. It's a weaker division. It's better weather. By mm-hmm. the way, we've got to be honest about this. The NFC North now, Green Bay's stacked and young uh, and has cap space. Uh, Detroit is stacked and young. Uh, and Minnesota has a coach that I think we, and some weapons, we think Minnesota's on the rise if they can get the quarterback right. Yeah. So, by the way, that division, Justin, if if they bring Kirk Cousins back for two years, well, Fields is not Goff. He doesn't look like he's Jordan Love. I watched mm. week 18. So it far. doesn't look close. And he's not Cousins if he's healthy. You can't do anything in a division with the fourth best quarterback. If he goes to that division, now you have an argument, mm. is he as good as Baker Mayfield? Okay. Whether he is or not, He's in the argument for best quarterback talent in his division. If you have the fourth best quarterback. Wait, is he, is he more talented than Derek Carr? I think he is significant. He's bigger, stronger, more athletic. Derek, okay. I thought this year became a little bit of a dink and dunk oh, guy. Dennis Allen, you know, in that offense. I'm, not, I'm just saying, if you are in the discussion, argument for best quarterback in your division, you have a shot to make the playoffs. Justin Fields is the fourth best quarterback of Kirk Kind of Pivot podcast. McCall Hardman, who went to the Jets, they went and got him, couldn't figure out how to use him. Uh, here he is talking about his experience, brief experience. Remember, he was in the Super Bowl for the Chiefs, game winning touchdown, his brief experience with the Jets. Going to the Jets, I've seen the other side of where it's not where you want to be at. Y'all can't tell me about winning. I'm, 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 I've been to four Super Bowls. In five years, you know what I'm saying? I know what winning looks like. Right. I know what winning is. So y'all keep telling me certain things. It's like, I'm not going for that. Like, because y'all not doing it right. Like, we got hammers on the ground. We don't got no discipline. People feel like it's too many individual egos in this locker room or whatever. And I'm telling them, I'm like, this not going to get y'all to win. It's not going to happen. Again, the Chiefs are the gold standard. Andy reads the gold standard. And then he went to the Jets. I don't want to hear who's McCole Hardman. I don't know. Game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl, three catches, one with the Jets. You don't have to be a great player to have great access, to have great perspective. A lot of people in my business aren't stars, but they know stuff. They say stuff. doesn't invalidate it because you're not a superstar in a sport. I want access. I want raw, real, relevant opinions. These are relevant. McCall Hardman can play. Not as good as some thought, but he was valuable to the Chiefs. They brought him back and a big game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. He went on regarding the offense. Again, Saul is a defensive coach. He talked about the Jets' offense. Just got a new coach staff that came in, you know, and, like, it's no standard there. It's like everybody do what they want to do, and it's like whatever. Now, granted, the defense have a more of a – stabilized standard with that with the coaching staff on that side. So you could tell the defense got a they got a, a standard, but the offense is just like, all right, we'll just figure it out. It's Aaron show. Mm-hmm. Let Aaron do what Aaron do, you know what I mean? But then when Aaron go down, it's like, we don't know what to do. Not a good look for Aaron Rodgers, who I've always said is a great talent. I don't view him as a great leader. That's okay. Kevin Durant, great talent. Don't view him as a great leader. It's not what he does. He hits shots. Aaron makes passes. But uh, you want me to take the Jets seriously in a division with Josh Allen and improved weapons, Tua, Mike McDaniel, and great weapons, and you want me to take Nat Hackett, Aaron off a of surgery, arguably worst O-line in the league seriously. Can't, won't, no thanks, and I don't care if McCole Hardman's not a superstar player. Touchdown in the Super Bowl was a game winner. Good enough for me. So your life will overwhelmingly be a result of your choices. And Aaron, for several years, had a standard on offense. He had an offensive coach, two of them. He had a great O-line every year. PFF top 10 Packer. He had running backs. He had a standard. He had success. He had a front office that drafts and develops, in my opinion, and I've said this recently, as well as any in the NFL last 25 years. Packers draft and develop at an incredibly high level. And he grumbled, passive-aggressive shots, he went into the darkness, and he chose the Jets. Bad look. Bad look for Sala. Bad look for Aaron. Smartest guy in the room made a really bad career choice. You can't take him seriously. I got Baltimore's organization and Lamar. Buffalo was winning before Josh Allen. I got Joe Burrow coming back. I got Tua Mike McDaniel. 
I look at all the C.J. Stroud's a baller. Trevor Lawrence will bounce back. And you want me to take the Jets seriously. That was damning stuff right there. That was not good. All right. This could be good. So a bunch of things converged at one time. First of all, an NBC reporter in Chicago said, um, the Falcons are the leader in the clubhouse. On the same day that Raheem Morris at the Combine, the head coach of Atlanta, went to the podium and said, I wouldn't be here if we got better quarterback play. <laughs> so the Falcons are in line for a quarterback and made a call last night. My feeling is it's not going to take forever. Uh, it is not going to take forever.